To align Sanger sequencing data against a reference sequence, click the Add Sequences button, and then load your sequencing reads and reference sequence. In this case, I'm adding the reference.seq file and the six read files from the SNP demo folder installed with LaserGene. Once your reads are loaded, select your reference sequence and then click the Mark Ref button. Then click Assemble. SeqMan will then create a single contig containing the reference sequence and each of the six read files. To view the assembly, double click on contig1. This opens the alignment view, which shows the reference sequence at the top and each of the reads below. You can expand the reference sequence by clicking the arrow to the left of the reference sequence name. This shows the features that are present on the reference sequence, including CDS features with translations. You can also expand the individual read files to view trace data. To view depth of assembly coverage along the reference sequence, open the strategy view. Here you can see the coverage is pretty even along the length of the reference sequence. We can show SNPs in both of these views by going to SNP, Show SNPs. Here you can see SNPs are shown as hash marks along the reads in the strategy view. To jump to one of these SNPs, simply double click on the hash mark. This opens the SNP in the alignment view. Here you can see that the T in the reference sequence is green. This is because there's a variation feature annotated on the reference sequence here. To look at the SNP in more detail, I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key to expand trace data for the rest of the reads. And we can see that for some of the reads, there are peaks for C and T at this position, which results in the ambiguous base call Y. For other reads, we see there is only a C peak. To view a complete list of SNPs, I can open the SNP report. Here, I can look at the SNP Summary tab to see a condensed list of SNPs at each position along the reference. Or I can look at the All Found SNPs tab to view the SNPs in each read individually. I can easily filter this report by SNP Percentage, Depth of Coverage, and Distance to the Closest Coding Feature. Also note that for SNPs that occur within a coding feature, a codon change is noted. This report is interactive, so I can double click on a SNP to jump to that position in the alignment view. I can also confirm or reject SNPs from this view. You can also assemble sequencing data from multiple samples against the same reference sequence using SeqMan's Assemble and Groups option. To set this up, click Add Sequences and add your reads and reference sequence in the same way. Then select the reference and click Mark Ref. Now select one of the samples and click Assemble in Groups. This option allows you to assemble each sample into its own contig based on the name of the reads. So I'm going to select the name of the read that is unique to each sample. SeqMan will then create a group name for each set of samples. Now click Assemble. And here we have one contig for each of the samples. Now, if we open the SNP report, the contig ID column shows which sample the SNP was found in, so we can compare SNPs across samples. If you have further questions about assembling or analyzing Sanger sequencing data in SeqMan Pro, or any other questions about our software, please visit our website, dnastar.com, or Contact us at support at dnastar.com.